Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In this video, I'm going to discuss how the U.S. government and the media work together to mislead the public about climate. This is the primary diagram for journalists from the National Climate Assessment. It includes this graph of U.S. wildfire burn acreage. The graph begins in 1983 and shows a sharp increase in burn acreage since then. But if we look at the longer term data from the U.S. Forest Service, we can see why they cherry picked a start date of 1983. It was the lowest burn acreage year of the last century. Burn acreage in the United States was much higher during the first half of the 20th century than it has been since then. This 1945 pamphlet from the U.S. Forest Service read, Every year an average of 31 million acres of forest land is burned over an area larger than the state of New York. This high burn acreage was carefully documented by the New York Times in 1938. Forest fires went every three minutes in 1937, burned almost 22 million acres. That's a big number, and they said that almost twice that much burned the previous year in 1936. And as bad as forest fires were during the 1930s, during pre-industrial times, burn acreage in the United States was much higher. According to this 1995 report from the U.S. government, burn acreage in the United States is down 90% since pre-industrial times. So it's pretty clear why the U.S. government wants to hide all the inconvenient fire data prior to 1983. By hiding all the data before 1983, they can make it appear that there is a correlation between carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, shown in green, and burn acreage, shown in blue. But if they showed the complete data set, it would be clear that there is no correlation between CO2 and burn acreage, quite the opposite. The goal is to demonize fossil fuels, so they have to hide all of the data before 1983. Let's take a look at why there was this big spike in burn acreage during the 1930s. The spike in burn acreage during the 1930s correlates quite closely with heat waves. This graph is from the science section of the National Climate Assessment, which shows that heat waves in the United States were much worse prior to 1960. Heat waves are associated with drought, so it's not surprising there was a large spike in burn acreage as well at the same time. This is where the fact checkers come in. The Heartland Institute wrote, U.S. acres burned each year are much fewer now, even in our worst years, than was the case in the early 20th century. Their statement is 100% correct, but PolitiFact says it's mostly false. They wrote, No, wildfires weren't bigger in the 1920s and 30s than today. The data suffered from double and triple counting, and in the 1920s and 1930s, Federal officials wrongly recorded millions of acres of intentional fires as wildfires. So let's fact check the fact checkers. It is true that they counted the number of fires differently prior to 1983. The double and triple counting in the number of fires is obvious. There's a discontinuity in 1983 and the number of fires prior to that was much higher. If there was a similar problem with burn acreage, we would also see a discontinuity in 1983, but that discontinuity does not exist. If they were double and triple counting burn acreage prior to 1983, the graph would look something like this, but it doesn't. The Heartland claim was about burn acreage, not the number of fires, so what Heartland said was correct. So the first PolitiFact fact check was incorrect. Now let's look at this part. In the 1920s and 1930s, federal officials wrongly recorded millions of acres of intentional fires as wildfires. But Heartland didn't say anything about wildfires. They were talking about total burn acreage. So the PolitiFact straw man was completely bogus. Most fires during the 1920s and 1930s were started by humans. And nothing has changed. It's still that way today new active fires that have come up over the course of the weekend, the El Dorado, getting a lot of attention uh, because it's a reminder that the vast majority of fires that we experience on an annual basis uh, come from individuals making bad decisions or uh, by simple neglect and accident, meaning 90 plus, 90 plus percent 
of the fires that we experience in the state of California on an annual basis are man-made fires. There's no legitimacy to the PolitiFact fact check. It's completely bogus. Burn acreage so far this year has been historically low, less than 1 million acres burned through July 7th. That is less than 1% of burn acreage during pre-industrial times. Let's finish this up by taking a look at why burn acreage was so low during the 1980s. This graph shows wet and dry periods in New Mexico for the past 2,000 years. The 1980s was one of the wettest decades on record. I remember many phenomenal ski days during the 1980s in New Mexico. By hiding all the data before 1983, the government can create a completely fake story about burn acreage and carbon dioxide. So we might ask, why does the U.S. government want to demonize fossil fuels? Henry Kissinger explained this. Who controls the food supply controls the people. Who controls the energy can control whole continents. Who controls money can control the world. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate energy scam for the past 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.